With breeding herds, I think it's just a, a huge part of it, and this is something that, that I'm, I'm, I'm quite passionate about, not just about elephants, but in terms of how people behave around elephants rather than elephants around people, is um, breeding herds is just approached differently, I think. Mm -hmm. with, with bulls, you can sort of cruise right up to them and sort of say how's it, and they can tell you what they're feeling, and you can quite quickly get an idea of what's going on. But with females, because they've got a whole herd and a family structure to look after. They've got little babies and cousins and maybe some visitors at the time and maybe a must bull that's giving them grief. You've just got to sort of ease in a lot more. They've got to feel secure with your behavior before you're going to feel secure with their behavior. I think that's probably the main thing for me that's, that's different with, with breeding herds. But, um, yeah. Have you had, it, have you had any, um, have you had any encounters yet? Because you've been out there quite a few times on the road. Have you had any interesting encounters with bull elephants? Uh, Maka, actually, when we started talking about elephants, I actually thought about an account, and I didn't have it here, but um, I had it in Botswana. I'm not it's a very long story, but basically what happened was I was sitting also similar, exactly similar to this, um, just a little bit earlier in the day, um, sitting alone in a campfire. And um, along came an elephant. It was a very old elephant bull. He had only one tusk. And um, I know yeah, I've told you guys the story a couple of million times, but it's one of my favorite stories. Only a couple of thousand times. <laughs> Are you sure? Another yeah. couple What's of million. Story? million. It's, it's an elephant story. <laughs> but um, yes, it was just, just spectacular. This elephant was in Savuti in Botswana. And um, this beautiful elephant bull, one tusker, came down. There was a little bit, a little bit of a um, riverbed um, in front of me. And he was standing on the other side on a dam wall kind of thing. And I knew there was a lot of other elephants on the other side drinking. And I could hear them swimming and stuff. And uh, eventually this elephant bull came closer. And um, he came so sort of eventually like four or five meters from me, maybe five, six meters from me. And he just stood there and I was sitting there but shaking, <laughs> shaking in my chair. Um, just, it, was, it was spectacular, just this elephant so close. It's a totally wild situation. I really didn't have anywhere to go to. The, the closest place was the ablution blocks, probably a couple of hundred meters away. And there was big acacia trees, so no actual way I could climb into them. But um, this elephant bull came very, very close. And... Um, a couple of minutes later, another younger bull came, also from more or less the same place where this elephant bull came from. And uh, the first elephant bull, the one who was standing close to me, turned around and it went back to this younger bull. And they stood head to head like this, like literally head to head, for probably a couple of minutes, five minutes, without making a sound, not making a movement, nothing. And then suddenly just all chaos broke loose and they started chasing each other around. And um, the first elephant bull, the older one with the one tusk, just ran away. And the younger one came past me and stopped. Mark charged me. I, by this time, stood up and moved away a little bit. But Mark charged me and then turned back and just kept on <coughs> chasing the other elephant Interesting, uh, interesting term, mock charge or warning charge um, with other people. Um, it's the difference. You can also call it a greeting charge or a play charge or yeah, a, a lot of different. See if I can make you run charge. I've <laughs> <laughs> always said that if I, I came back to the bush, I'd <laughs> come back as an elephant so I could play around with the people on the safari vehicles and give them a little bit of excitement. But uh, that, that terminology, um, a warning charge and a real charge, how, in your eyes, well, how would you describe it, uh, Peter? Oof. If you were standing was, in a situation saying, and an elephant... I was wondering uh, questions are going to go this way because this, this becomes an experiment or experiential ex explanation. Mm. In other words, it's obviously a much easier thing to explain at the time. You know, there's obviously similarities in how elephants behave, but also... You know, at the time, I was thinking actually earlier of Alex behind the camera there, busy making sure you're seeing this all nicely. Um, Alex's first close elephant experience, I think really up close, apart from some scary ones that he had in Congo, was a big bull. It was um, on one of the clips as well. It was a breeding herd. Again, there were other vehicles standing quite far away. The one was the Must and so on. And, and we just sort of stood a little bit ahead of them, not in their way, but they could choose where they go. And, and the bull came and stood right next to us in the end, probably from here to... Alex, for me to a little bit further than Yanaway, huh? remember that time on, on Philemon um, Scotland? And he never gave a mock charge or something, but he was, he was a bit more um, imposing, if you want, in his behavior than maybe an elephant cow that's, you know, with Rexon once on camera, we had a charging in, you know, from 60 meters away. So mm. I think a mock charge, you know, like I said, a lot of them can be playful. With bulls, often you can have them literally just playing around with you. I've done it with them where where they mock charge you and you stop and they stop and then you mock charge them and, and you can do that back and forth. Uh, and so but on. how do you read that? Uh, I know you say it's exp uh, ex um, experiential and, um, and I emphasize this all the time that nature doesn't live in a book so we can never uh, give a book story and say this is how it works but there are, as a guide, there's certain rules that you learn. 
Yeah, no, obviously, I mean, there's, there's the typical things which, which you know, many of you are probably aware of as well. Mock charge, typically ears open, trumpeting, lots of noise, branches breaking, dust flying. Um, literally that, trying to be as, as big and boisterous and, and, and intimidating as possible. Um, serious charges, typically, you know, trunk is tucked away, ears are flat, there's not that much noise going on. The elephant is now deciding I'm going to run towards you and do something. But, uh, and again, we, we're going to cut this conversation short just now, but... Um, very often you hear about guides that tell you about an elephant that charged them and they drove away for hundreds of meters or kilometers with the elephant that close to them and it was just that close and they just got away. You must keep in mind an elephant can, can run 55, 60 kilometers an hour, mm. which is a very, very fast speed to be driving through the bush, almost impossible. So the point is if the elephant actually wanted to catch you, it would. And if it did want to do something, it would. So even a lot of charges that people come back and, 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 and explain as a serious charge um, are still mock charges. So I think a mock charge you read way more in, in the behavior beforehand. Mm. There was, if you're coming up to the elephant, how that elephant uh, behaves when you're 60 meters away and 100 meters away and 20 meters away. Mm. So that by the time it then gives you some kind of interaction, uh, you've got a much clearer idea of, of what it is about. Them. So if you get what I'm saying. So Absolutely. It's, it's the behavior Absolutely. building up to the mock charge yeah. that tells you what kind of charge yeah, it is. And I, and I did mention that to Alex as well when we had that situation with that bull. If uh, his intention was to cause damage to us and to actually um, uh, proceed with a full charge, he would have yeah, he let good. us know a long time before yeah. we actually got there. Um, so just by his um, behavior on our approach, it gives you a good indication on, on the actual seriousness of a child when it does actually happen. But interesting subject, very interesting subject. And this is going to be a tough one now because um, I, I really can't uh, participate in this one as much as I would like to. Um, but we've got a really uh, interesting question coming in from David Keane. Um, and it's regarding probably one of the famous, most famous crowd of um, characters out in the, the Juma area at the moment. Um, I've been hearing about them for many years, well, not in the last two, three years, I've never had the opportunity to actually see them uh, in face to face. Um, did have an experience with them about uh, two weeks, uh, or yeah, about two weeks ago. But um, yeah, a crowd of uh, lads that um, have been known as the mm. Mopohos. Um, uh, it's a coalition of five or six. Yeah, five typically the way we see them. Yeah, in total, yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, well, she knows quite a lot about them as well. Mm. Done lots of reading and writing about them. The question that came in, um, which is uh, quite a, uh, it's quite an interesting question, is um, what are the chances? I mean, being such a strong coalition um, of five males, which is such a unique thing, um, what are the chances of actually a bigger coalition being formed and actually pushing out uh, the Mapojos? Jan? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice to see? <laughs> <laughs> that would be quite a story unfolding. Um, okay, well, I, I really don't have the, the knowledge backing or to, to really answer that question, but I, I would think that we know that some of the males or some, some of the individuals actually in, that, uh, in the Mapokos are a little bit older. I know Mr. Mr. T is getting losing, uh, losing, his main, losing his main quite a lot now. And, uh, but I would suppose, I don't know what you guys think, that First of all, I think before that's going to happen, this Mapoko male um, coalition is probably going to not deteriorate, but one of them is going to, or maybe two of them, is going to die out or just get discarded um, eventually. And then, I don't know, five, six lines more, or let's say seven other lines are t taking that, 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 I don't know. I don't know if that's going to happen. I think before yeah. that's going to happen, um, we don't know of any other coalitions that's that big now. But uh, I think before that's going to happen, um, I think one of the Mopokos, or maybe two of them, will either um, go in their uh, separate ways, or one of them or two of them might die, and then there's obviously the chance of another five male um, lions attacking them and taking their uh, yeah. 